Hi, welcome, this is Clement the Elector. In this video we will have a look at how to use the analog to digital converter of a microcontroller to obtain accurate measurements. Most general purpose microcontrollers feature an analog to digital converter or AD converter that allows you to measure voltages with. The resolutions of these AD converters varies from 8 bits up to sometimes even 24 bits, uh, but 10 uh, or 12 bits are the most common resolutions. A 10 bit resolution corresponds to 1024 steps, 12 bits is 4096. If the input voltage range is from 0 to say 5 volts, then one step is uh, almost 5 millivolts or 0.1% when using 10 bit resolution. It is uh, a little bit more than 1 millivolts or 0.02% when you use 12 bit resolution. Those are very good accuracies, much better than you need most of the time. The ATmega328 microcontroller, as mounted on the Arduino Uno board, has a 10 bit AD converter. So let's use it to measure some voltages with. This is very easy to do with the Arduino function and log read, like so. The values returned by analog read are in the range from 0 to 1023, not 1024, because 1024 is not a 10-bit value, but an 11-bit value. Let's try that on our board. I put a potentiometer on a breadboard with one side connected to ground and the other side to plus 5 volts, and the wiper connected to pin A0. After uploading the sketch to the board and opening the serial monitor, we see the following output. When we turn the potentiometer, the measured value changes from 0 to 1023, exactly as expected. Now let's convert the value to volts. For this we must divide it by 1024 and multiply it by its maximum input value, which defaults to 5 volts on the Arduino Uno. This corresponds to this equation. After uploading the modified sketch, we see the following output. It is always 0. Even if we turn the potentiometer, it remains zero. Now why? Did we forget to configure something? No, we didn't. The reason is that we are using C, C++. The way we wrote our equation tells the compiler to use integer mathematics. The output of analog read is between zero and 1023, and we divide it by 1024. The result is always less than one. Less than one in integer mathematics equals to zero, and there is no rounding taking place. To get something useful out of our equation, we must force the compiler to use floating point mathematics. Luckily, this is easy to do. First of all, we turn V in into a floating point value, but that is not enough. The calculation itself must be done with floating point values too. There are several ways to achieve this. A good way is to use a so-called typecast to turn the output of analog read into a floating point value, like this. Now, when you turn the potentiometer, the output value can be set to values in the range from 0 to 5 volts. But there are only two decimals, whereas we expected 0.1% resolution, which is three decimals. Well, that's an easy fix to just add a width specifier to serial print line, like so. Cool, we can measure a voltage in the range from 0 to 5 volts with a resolution of almost 5 millivolts. The maximum value is 4.995 volts, exactly as expected. Now let's turn this into something practical, like a 12 volt car battery voltage monitor. I don't have a car battery at hand, but I can simulate one with an adjustable power supply set to 12.6 volts, which is a typical voltage of a fully charged lead acid battery. When the car motor is running, the battery is being charged and the voltage can be as high as almost 15 volts. This is too much for the microcontroller's analog input, so the first step is to lower the input voltage into the range of 0 to 5 volts. We can do this with a 2 resistor voltage divider. This is the equation for such a divider. With our values we get 5 over 15, which equals 1 over 3, which equals 1 over 1 plus 2. So R2 must be twice the value of R1. If we choose a standard value like 10 kilo ohms for R1, then R2 should be 20 kilo ohms. Now this is not a standard value, so we take the next higher standard value, which is 22k. If we put these values back into our equation and solve it for the maximum input voltage, we find 16 volts. 
Without resistor values, the maximum input voltage can be 16 volts, and so we are safe. Let's build a simulation on our bench and measure the voltage with our sketch. The input voltage is 12.6 volts, and the voltage divider should turn this into 3.9375 volts. The values in the serial monitor are a bit off, however. I get values between 4 volts and almost 4.1 volts. The most common value is about 4.03 volts. Checking the input voltage with a multimeter gives a 3.923 volts, which doesn't make things any better. Of course, you say that is because the voltage divider is wrong. Just use better resistors. Ok, so let's replace the 5% carbon resistors by 1% metal film types. Now the multimeter says 3.916 volts, and the values in the serial monitor have dropped about 10 millivolts to 4.02 volts on average. Checking the multimeter with a second multimeter confirms the input voltage of 3.916 volts. So let's measure the value of the resistors of the voltage divider. My best multimeter measures R1 as 9.999 kilo ohms and R2 as 22.145 kilo ohms. When we enter these values in the voltage divider equation, the calculated input voltage becomes 3.919 volts, which is pretty close to what the multimeter says. The values obtained with the sketch, on the other hand, are still too high. But then again, it has not been corrected for the real values of the voltage divider. So let's do that now. Well, that doesn't change a lot either, so the problem must be somewhere else. Let's look again at the first equation that converts an ADC reading into a voltage. A thing we have not checked yet is the factor 5 in there. What exactly is it, and where does it come from? It is the maximum value of the input signal that we can measure. It is, in a way, the length of our ruler. But where is the length of the ruler defined? Well, for an AD converter, it is its reference value. The AD converter of the AT Mega 328 microcontroller has a programmable reference. For the Arduino Uno, it is connected by default to the AVCC pin of the controller. This is pin 20 on a 28 pin DIP package, so let's measure the value on the AVCC pin. On my Arduino Uno, I measured this as 4.834 volts, not at all the 5 volts we assumed. So let's correct our sketch for this new value. Now we get values that are much closer to what we expect. On the Arduino Uno and in many other designs based on the AT Mega 328, the AVCC pin is connected to the 5V power supply via a basic filter. If AVCC is used as a reference for the AD converter, then the quality of the power supply will have a direct influence on the quality of the measurements. The potentiometer experiment that we did earlier showed how true this is. Here the input voltage was directly related to the controller's power supply, and the measurements were almost perfect and very stable. With an input voltage independent from the power supply, we see a lot of noise. To fix this, we have the following options. 1. Improve the power supply. 2. Use a better reference for the ADC. And 3. Do both. The first option is easy, power the Arduino Uno from a good quality external power supply, not a cheap USB phone charger. That's what I did to get these results. I measured AVCC as 5.001 volts, which I entered into the sketch. The results are better than before, but still rather noisy. Arduino provides a function to change the ADC's reference, analog reference, and we can use it to select the built-in reference or the external reference input pin, VREF. These are the results obtained with the VREF pin connected to the external power supply. This is basically the same setup as before when the reference was AVCC. To use the internal 1.1V band gap reference, we must adapt the voltage divider. Using the voltage divider equation from before, we have this, which we can reorganize to obtain this. If we keep R1 as 10 kilo ohms, then R2 will become 135 kilo ohms. If we use 120 kilo ohms in series with 15 kilo ohms, then the maximum input voltage will be 16 volts. Here are the results. It is difficult to compare these values to the previous series because the dynamic range is no longer the same, it is about 5 times less. So maybe you manage to reduce the noise level a bit because the reference is more stable, but you introduce some noise due to the lower dynamic range.
As always, it is a compromise. And then another thing, you probably noticed that the measured values are still rather noisy. So how is this possible? We tried every trick possible to improve things and still the results are disappointing. Of course, you can add filtering and averaging and things like that to the sketch, but that shouldn't be necessary as the input voltage is already super clean and stable. What if the noise source is actually interference caused by an external source? Above my bench are two LED panels uh, to light my workspace. Uh, what if I switch them off? Uh, surprise, the noise has almost completely disappeared. So now let's revert back to the default AD converter reference AVCC together with a high quality external power supply. And what's the results? No noise anymore. So it is possible to do good quality voltage measurements with an Arduino Uno, as long as you know what you are doing. In this video I showed how to configure an Arduino Uno board for precise voltage measurements. A good quality external power supply is required for this. Also, you must know the exact value of the reference voltage the AD converter is using. Do not simply assume that it is 5 volts or so, measure it. Of course, any circuitry to adapt the input signal must be accurate in order to obtain accurate results. But even when all this is taken care of, noise probably remains. In my case, I found that my main noise problem was due to external interference produced by the LED panels above my bench. When I switched them off, the noise disappeared and I got stable and clean readings. Therefore, shielding the circuit by building it into a grounded metal box is probably a very good idea. All this showed that there is much more to doing precision measurements than simply taking a high resolution AD converter. You must also take the environment into account. Now that you know all this, you too can take accurate measurements.